This will be the fifth in our series of sessions on upgrading from Primo to Primo V. In today's session, we will discuss the, co the conversion of Primo data configuration to Primo V. This will be part one. Part two is scheduled for next week, in which I will discuss additional and advanced configuration related to the uh, conversion of Primo data in Primo V. This session will begin with the background comparison of display and local field configuration in Primo and Primo V. There will be a review of the structure and syntax of Primo V normalization rules, which are different from the normalization sets and rules you are familiar with in Primo back office. This actually may be found more simple for Primo institutions entitled to total care service that have not, got, that have not gotten used to working with data normalization in Primo back office. We will then focus on uh, the implementation of normalization rules in Primo V configuration, adjusting display fields and creating additional local fields that can be used for display, search, and facet. I'll go over some classic examples of norm rules, which I hope, which I hope will get uh, will get you confident as you dive into the world of Primo V data data normalization. You are welcome to submit questions related to the session in the Q&A box, and I will try to address them towards the end of this session. Finally, we will look at several questions that have been pre-submitted. So let's get started. Here is a short review of the normalization process you are currently working with in Primo back office. You catalog and manage bibliographic records in Alma. While changes made to these bib records in Alma trigger a republishing job of these records in XML format to a Primo FTP server. Primo back office harvests these source XML records and runs them through a normalization and enrichment process, which we refer, refer to as pipes. The outcome of this normalization are PNX records, standing for Primo normalized XML, which are held in the Primo database. Now, uh, why am I spending all this time on Primo back office during a Primo V session? Well, firstly, um, to express and emphasize how complicated the process is in classic Primo in comparison to Primo V. And secondly, to highlight the, um, the section of the process, which we will be discussing today, as a reminder that many of the other stages of the process have become irrelevant in Primo V. When it comes to Primo VE, there is no publishing or harvesting. The Primo VE PNX is rendered on the fly for front end functionality during search time. Primo VE comes with out of the box sets of normalization rules, which affect display, search, and facets. Resource types, which are, which are part of the display section in Primo back office, are mapped separately. Other PNX sections that were formed based on normalization of the source XML are no longer relevant when it comes to Primo V. For example, Primo V utilizes the Alma browse functionality. Therefore, this section is not part of the PNX and there is no need to write normalization rules as done in Primo back office. Two other examples are DDoP and Ferber, which are controlled elsewhere in the discovery configuration in the discovery configuration and are calculated on the fly when a search is executed in the Primo V view. A significant benefit of the way Primo V normalization is designed is that records managed in Alma are simply and immediately visible and searchable in the Primo V view with no need to create sets of normalization rules. You can use the available normalization as is or implement your modifications by adjusting, adding, or replacing Primo V fields. Also, after, after customizing and applying normalization rules in Primo VE, the changes become effective immediately in the view, and there is no need to run an update pipe or re-index your data. So in other words, uh, modifying uh, either the bibliographic record or the Primo V normalization will take effect immediately once the changes are, are saved, of course. All you have to do to see the outcome in, Primo v, in the Primo V view is to refresh your browsing session. Um, I use Control F5. There is, however, one specific scenario where records are required to be re-indexed in order for search normalization rules to take effect. This will be discussed in our next GoVE Become an Expert session. So if you Google Primo VE mapping, the first result will lead you to, to the document which table of contents, 
which table of contents uh, you see here on the right. This documentation page lists the full default mapping for display, search, facet, and resource types uh, for main MARC format standards in addition to Dublin Core. Pre-movie normalization rules are, as a matter of fact, ALMA drool normalizations. They may look familiar to those of you who have worked in the past with ALMA normalization rules. In addition to our GoVE documentation, there are several pages of product documentation and a highly useful collection of examples in the developer network tech, tech blog. Needless to say, you are welcome to contact Prima Support upon any challenge you may happen to encounter. Let's start with the syntax. Each display or local field can contain one or more rules that contain a set of conditions plus a set of actions that are applied to the Primo VE field when the conditions are met. Each action within a rule can be performed on a single field, and the actions are compiled in the order in which they appear in the rule. This slide displays a basic demonstration of the Primo V normalization rule structure and an example. We have, the, we have the rule name, the condition section, and the action section, uh, followed by an end statement. Before you begin adjusting display fields or creating local fields, we recommend going through the following steps to determine whether or what data normalization modifications to the display fields are required. First, you'll want to review Primo VE's default mapping to see which out-of-the-box fields already meet your needs. The full mapping can be found in the documentation I mentioned earlier. Next, compare the details section for records in your Primo and Primo VE views to ensure that you are dis displaying the correct fields. You may have to add additional display fields to the details section in Primo VE, which can be done going to the full record services tab in view configuration. Become familiar with a variety of normalization guides. There are three Primo VE documents, which I recommend. Another two GoVE documents written specifically for institutions moving from Primo to Primo VE, and a tech blog in our developer network, which offers a wide variety of rule examples. I can say that out of the six sources of uh, information, the tech blog is the one that I personally use the most when working on Primo VE normalization rules. And this is what the tech blog looks like it's a long web page with many, many examples. I found this, this tech bug very useful. Our first type of Primo VE normalization use is for display fields. Normalization rules provide the building blocks for controlling and making changes to the way metadata in bibliographic records are seen by patrons. In addition to the normalization mapping document I mentioned earlier, you can view the actual out-of-the-box rules for each display field. These rules can be left as is or modified to meet your preferences. You can always go back and restore the default version of the rules. In Alma's discovery configuration, go to manage display and local fields. On this page, select add field and then add display field. There will be a drop-down list from which you can select which fields normalization to view and possibly edit. So by selecting a, by selecting a display field from this drop-down list, you're not actually adding the display field, but rather adding the option to customize its normalization. And the same goes for deleting a display field that has been added, which will restore the field's default normalization, not delete the field itself. I'll show you this in a moment in Alma. Uh, so working on display fields for Primo VE is pretty much risk-free, and even more so if you're not yet live with Primo V. One thing I do recommend, though, is saving a version of your customized rules as um, saving a version of the rules or, rel um, or reverting to the default rules will not save the previous versions of the rule set. Let's hop, hop over to Alma. We go to Discovery, Display Configuration, 
manage display and logo fields add field add display field and let's add a display field and now again we're not adding the addition uh, display field we're adding the option to edit it the, the addition field is already there and can be used in in your pre movie view even without um, opening it creating it and editing it editing it let's see the out of the box mapping for the addition display field um, as you see and now we can we can go ahead and um, make changes we can remove a subfield we can add a subfield and um, more more manipulations that we'll see in the that we'll soon see um, and of course you can restore the default version this is the out of the box out of the box uh, rules once you're done we haven't saved anything but once you're done let's do that save back and now we've touched the normalization rules you have to hit apply rules okay so now the, the rules have been applied and you can already um, refresh your uh, browsing session of the pre movie view and you'll see the outcome of the changes we've made now deleting this this field will not delete the addition field it'll delete the version that we've created which means um, you now have the out of the box um, mapping of the for the addition display field um, Uh, these display fields and additional local fields that you may configure can be displayed in the brief record display and full record full display detail section this is covered in the first go ve become an expert session which focused on view configuration another type of primo ve normalization use is for creating primo ve local fields local fields allow you to map additional metadata that is not mapped from source records by default in primo ve so that the metadata, metadata can be displayed in the details section of the records full display or indexed to allow filtering for search results with local facets and search fields. These would be the equivalent of LDS, LSR, and LF, LFC, local display fields, local search fields, local facet fields in Primo back office. Um, local fields are used similarly in both Primo and Primo V, but they have some configuration differences. Unlike in Primo back office, where LDS, LSR, and LFC uh, have to be configured separately in three local fields, a local field in Primo V can act as either any or all of LDS, LSR, and LFC. In most cases, local fields are available immediately for display, search, and facet. If you use the normalization rule method for search or facets in a local field, recalculation or reindexing is needed for your data. This will be discussed in part two of the session, which will be delivered next week. Information can be mapped from your local bibliographic records, but not from other sources, such as authority enrichment, inventory, inventory fields such as AVA, course information, etc. Back on the Manage Display and Local Fields page, select Add Field and then Add Local Field. You can configure up to 100 new local fields. On this page, select the local field you wish to utilize, the final label to be displayed, and translations if you are using multiple language Primo View interfaces. In the Normalization Rule for Display section at the bottom, at the bottom of the page, you will find a simple template of a single rule which you can use to replace, use or replace with your own rule. Of course, uh, each local field can process multiple rules, one after another, just like display fields. But remember that each rule must have a unique rule name. Let me show you that 
in AMA. Okay, we're in manage display and local fields, add field, add local field, and we can select any of the hundred available local fields. We give it a name, and you can give it a you can set the translations if you're using uh, other language interfaces for Primo. And in the normalization section, you'll have you'll see the basic template, which um, you can either uh, you can use to um, you can just uh, define the field that you want to use, uh, and you're ready to go. And you can add additional you can add additional rules um, to this set. Uh, Manage display and local fields page offers additional settings. Select the enable field for search checkbox if you want the information in this local field to be searchable in Primo V in addition to being displayed. Being able to use this search searchable local field as a search index in Primo VE's advanced search will require additional configuration, which we will review in part two of this Go VE Become an Expert session next week. Select the Enable Field for Facet checkbox if you want the information in this local field to be used as a facet to filter search results. This will be in addition to being displayed in the Details section uh, or the Brief Record results. For, uh, for use with Dublin Core records only, you can select the parallel, uh, the parallel local fields from Dublin Core checkbox. If you have defined Dublin Core normalization rules that map, that map information to the associated local discovery fields, you can use up to 50 of these local discovery fields um, with uh, Dublin Core. When the Use Translation option is selected, Primo-V will display the translations that are defined for the local field's value in the local field translate code table. For, for up to one of your local fields, you can select the Use Full Text Links for Indexing checkbox if you want to index the externally held full text file to which this field uh, links in the bibliographic record. Now, as an alternative to using uh, normalization rules for display, this configuration page offers the option to populate the local field you are working with you're working on with one of the one or more of the mark fields offered in the drop-down list. Here on the left are the are the list of mark fields to choose from. Obviously, obviously, if the mark field you are interested in using is not in the drop-down list, you'll have to use normalization rules for display. Let's review some of the basic points in regards to this, in regards to the structure of the normalization rule. When a display or local field has multiple rules, each rule must be titled uniquely. The four section statements, rule, when, then, and end, must each be on their own line. Boolean operators are permitted within the condition section only. You can combine parentheses with Boolean operators in order to achieve specific precedence logic between conditions. Before composing a condition or an action involving a mark field or subfield, you must define the condition checking that the field or subfield exists in the bib record it will be processing. By checking for subfield's existence, you are also checking for the field's existence. Here are some variations of existence checks, which will always be located at the top of the condition section. Additional conditions are not to be on the same line as existence checks unless the existence condition involves a control field such as LDR or 008. And here are some of the basics when it comes to the action sections uh, um, of a rule. The action section will begin by defining the mark subfields that will be subject to the rule's actions. Next, you can insert additional actions manipulating content of the mark subfields. These additional actions, uh, which we will refer to as transformation actions, are not mandatory. 
subfield content is manipulated by using temporary variables, which are populated with the marked subfields and will end up being inserted to a Primo VE display or local field. The actions section uh, will always end with a single assignment command. This is the command that will insert data into the Primo VE field you're working on. Using the create action, will add an occurrence to the Primo VE field in addition to any other occurrences which may have been created by other rules in the set. Using the set action, will um, will create a Primo VE field if it does not yet exist and override any previous content added to the field during the compilation of the set of rules. Now let's see an example of that in Alma. We'll go to our um, addition display field. And now here you see we have um, we have the create we have the create command and another create command, which means if uh, you you could get <clears throat> two um, two appearances of the addition field, one holding the 250 and one holding the 880 250. <clears throat> now if I were to change this to set um, addition two. Um, then, if um, if um, if the the bib record had both a 250 and the 880 250, you'd get only the second. You'd get only the 880 250 because the set overrides any previous rules in the set. A set action is also used when inserting marked subfields as marked subfield data into temporary variables. And we'll see an example of that soon. Let's talk a bit about uh, the options we have available for the actions section. You can add, remove, or replace a string. You can merge temporary variables to a single variable before, before setting or creating a Primo VE field holding the content of this variable. You can manipulate the prefix or suffix of the field's content. You can manipulate strings using regular expressions, regex. Here are some examples. You can add a prefix to the content of a subfield before inserting it into, Primo, into a Primo V field. As I mentioned, in order to perform manipulation, manipulations, you'll have to define temporary variables, which will then be copied over to the Primo V field. You can combine several subfields to a single Primo VE field using temporary variables. In this example, you define the delimiter between the subfields. This is, this is similar to the previous example, only here you are using a single temp variable and defining the delimiter between the subfields, and you will not be manipulating each subfield individually. In this example, you'll replace part of the subfield's content with an alternative string. This is similar to the previous example, only here you are removing part of the content without a replacement. And here as well, you are removing part of the content, but with using a regular expression, which gives you more control over the action. I'd like to pause here in order to address any questions that may have come up in through the Q&A box. Um, this is a good opportunity to mention the survey sent out in advance that allows you to pre-submit questions we can, which we can then address during the coming sessions. Okay, Ben, uh, thank you very much. We do have a few questions that came in. Um, first question is, uh, it would be awfully nice to have versioning change log functionality in Alma slash Primo. Is this planned anytime soon? Um, not that I'm aware of. I believe it's not, it's not on the roadmap. Okay. Uh, next question is, is there any possibility to add to the brief display an authentication note that's connected to the full text link? I imagine not, um, but what I recommend is um, sending this question either to Primo Support or to the GoVE uh, info inbox, and we'll verify 
uh, before giving uh, giving you a definite uh, answer. How do mods records work? Okay, now uh, I assume uh, uh, referring to mods records, you're um, you're relating to external data source uh, normalization. Um, so this works different. Uh, um, what we're dealing with today is uh, normalization of uh, data that sits in, that's sitting in Alma. Um, I believe the the session last week uh, dealt with um, dealt with normalization of uh, external data being imported into into Primo V. Okay. Uh, the next question is: Can you go over the temp temporary variables? I didn't uh, quite grasp that part. Yeah. Sure. Let me go back and find. Um, I'll even show you a live example in, in Alma. Um, let me see if we can find, find a good example. OK. So what we're doing here is um, you want to take you want to take the 600 field and you want to perform actions on it. So what you need to do is um, um, copy the content of these these subfields of the 600 field into a, a temporary um, variable. Then you perform your uh, your manipulation actions on this temporary uh, variable. You can add multiple variables and um, uh, work on them in, uh, separately, and then in the end, uh, combine them together. You're uh, copying the, the the content of uh, temp three into temp one, and then you create the primo ve field uh, with the content of uh, your final the final content of temp one. Um, and uh, further on, we'll see some more examples, which I hope will um, um, will make things even more clear. To avoid the display of two fields 264 that are in a record, shall I use the set action? Yes, yes. If you use a set action, you'll end up with one with one occurrence of the of the field, the 264 field, which will probably be uh, probably be publisher. If you use a create, um, you'll get you'll have more than one. Is there a complete list of normalization rule commands anywhere? Okay, so the the answer to that is no. We don't have a complete um, a complete document of all the um, um, all the available uh, rules and commands. Um, what we do have is um, the six different documents that I that I mentioned earlier, which um, pretty much cover everything, um, uh, all, all the available possibilities, um, especially the the tech blog and the and the developer network. Um, and of course, if you run into any any difficulty, anything that you're you uh, you can't find a way to um, uh, you, to, to execute, um, you have you have us here. You have the GoV info, and you have Primo support, and um, and we'll we'll uh, we'll help you find a solution. Okay, um, and I did get one other question. Um, would you be able to demo how the display of a Zero two zero zero two zero tag could be expanded to include both the dollar sign a and dollar sign q. Okay, sure. So let's let's do that now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to. Um, I believe the zero twenty isn't part of a display field. Um, so I'm going to create a local field, and it, the zero twenty is not is not in in the in the drop down list. So what we're going to do is zero twenty, and now we want uh, subfields A and Q. So um, let's uh, let's pretend I have no clue um, how to do this. And we'll go to, um, sorry, 
we'll go we'll look for an example Yeah, it is okay and we go to our uh and here the first example is what we want we want uh, a mark field with more than one with more than one uh, subfield let's take that go back to our our alma when mark 020 has any a or q then create um, the display LDS01 with, and now we're going to go back to our examples. And we're going to look for um, a create command which uses more than one, more than one subfield. And here it is. Here's an example. I'll take this. Back over to Alma. Create PNX displays LDS01 with. Uh, with mark 0, 020 subfields A and Q. Let's remove this one. And there we are. Let's just review it. We have we have a title. We have the condition. Uh, when mark 0, 020 has any uh, has either A or Q subfields, then um, insert into LDS 01. Um, subfields A and Q of mark 020. You save. Let's save. Apply rules. And that's it. Now when you want to see if you want to see it in um, in the Primo V view, you'll have to go to um view configuration let's say you want it in the details section let's go over to the full record services the details configure add field and here it is 020 that's the name i gave it add done and there it is at the bottom you can read you can Push it up in the order, um, and that's it. You'll see you'll see it in uh, records records in Primo V that have the zero have A or Q uh, of uh, mark zero twenty will display the content of um, uh, subfields A and Q in the details section of the full display. Okay, uh, I don't. Oh, there's another question that came in. Uh, when using conjunction with the replace wrapping delimiters transformation action. You can prefix and append delimiters to each subfield specified. However, Primo VE adds a blank space before the added prefix. How do you delete it? Okay, so I'm not aware of this, of, of this um, added blank space. Um, what I'd like to request is um, that you uh, submit a case to Primo support. Um, and uh, we'll look for a solution, we'll look for a way to, um, to remove this. Um, um this blank space that apparently is being uh, um, being added to um you know, to the field okay uh we don't have any other questions right now okay so here are some questions that we have been presented with in the past um how do i modify the normalization of the title display field so this question is better understood when inspecting the otb out of the box version of the rule set uh, you see, you'll see that on the here on the left. Um, it uses Java routines instead of the standard condition and set action we are familiar with. So, say you want to add or remove a subfield from the mapping, um, you can replace the OTB version with the suggested rule on the right and make the desired modifications. Now you have a uh, you have rules um, which. Um, which reflect the mapping of the title. You have the 245 and 130 for journals, and you can um, add or remove subfields, and you can um, you can modify the the action section. 
the next question is um, how to re how to reverse the author's name to display first name before surname. Uh, to demonstrate, I've added an example on the left where the catalog bib field in Alma holds the names in the opposite order of what we, what we wish our end users to see in Primo V. We've got um, um, in the author, we've got the last name and then we've got the first name. And what we want to end up with in Primo V is first name and last name. Um, Uh, on, um, okay, so on the right is a suggested rule which takes the last name in temp1, first name in temp2, and concatenates the variables in the desired order. Okay, so this is um, this is a good example of a question that was asked uh, just a few minutes ago. We're taking, um, temp1 is taking the last name, uh, temp2 is taking the first name, and you're ending up concatenating um, temp temp2 uh, adding it to temp one after it, so you're you're getting the last, you're getting the um, um, you're getting the the names in the opposite order of um, of what they are uh, of the way they're cataloged in Alma. You'll notice other manipulations are performed on each of the temp fields. An interesting variable to notice is temp four, which turns the dis turns the display field into a hypertext link which will lead to an advanced search in Primo V using the string in this temp, which in our case is subfield A of mark 100. Temp four holds um, subfield A of mark 100, and it's gonna become a hypertext link. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about uh, hypertext links uh, in, our next, uh, in our next section next week. Um, here's another one. How do I remove mark uh, 362 from the publisher display field? So in this specific example with uh, the 362 and in publisher field, it won't be enough to simply delete this rule from the set. You'll have to replace the OTB rule with the suggested rule on the bottom right, what you see here, where uh, you're adding a not available and this will remove um, 362 from the publisher field. Um, often you'll encounter syntax errors. The invalid bit of syntax um, is usually easy to detect when working with the page of examples I mentioned earlier. Um, here is one that could be slightly more tricky to figure out. On the left, I've pasted the rule uh, which cannot be saved due to an error. And the answer is here on the right. There are reserved characters that are identified as part of the syntax, such as parentheses, uh, quotation marks and dots. Um, when using a reserved character, not as part of the syntax, um, it'll have to be preceded by a slash, indicating that it is to be compiled as a simple character. Um, this is a good example because uh, you can you can now see which quotation marks are part of the, of the rule syntax and which are to be treated as standard characters. The ones before, the ones with um, with a slash before, these we're gonna want to relate as, as regular characters. We're gonna want this character to be inserted into temp one. And um, the, um, the, the parentheses, the, um, the quotation marks um, wrapping with the one character, this is part of the syntax. And so is, and so is this quotation mark, which is closing the, um, which is closing the content that's going to be put into temp1. Um, okay, here's one final question. How do I display content of a mark field based on the condition that a different mark field begins with a specific string? Um, so here's an example which uh, we can learn from. The string, the string we're looking for, uh, followed by a star um, and a dot, uh, all wrapped in quotation marks, will detect the fields in which the string is, a pre is the prefix. You can do the same in the other way around um, if you want to, to base the condition on the suffix. Um, so that would be um, so that would be a star dot and then your um, and then your string. 
Notice the parentheses uh, preceded by slashes, indicating that the parentheses are part of the string we are looking for. Okay, so we're looking for a string that um, um, that has uh, uh, opening bracket, OCLC, closing brackets, which is why we need a slash before each one of these uh, parentheses. Um, uh, and of course, the set command, which um, assuming that the, con the conditions are met, will populate this local field with the content of um, 500A and B in our, in our case, and override any other data inserted to this local field by preceding rules further up on the set of rules. Okay, uh, Scott, did any other questions come in meanwhile? Yeah, we did. Um, I think that we asked this one before, but uh, we'll just uh, repeat it. Uh, if I pressed restore button, would there be a way to track the code I added in the normalization rules? No, no. Uh, previous versions are not um, are not um, stored, which is why I recommend saving your your customized version um, elsewhere out of outside Alma. Um, I personally uh, um, um, prefer using Notepad plus plus, but you can really use any any word processor uh, for this purpose. Okay, another question that came in is, how can I display the sign copyright in the field 264 publisher? The sign comes with the second indicator four and it is always removed. I want to display it. Um, okay, uh, Scott, would you repeat that please? Yeah, how can I display the sign copyright in the field 264? publisher. This sign comes with the second indicator for, and it is always removed. I want to display it. Okay, so let's take a look at, uh, let's look at the publisher, uh, the publish display, display, um, uh, display field. And, um, and let's see what the OTB mapping is. Publisher. Now, um, let's say, okay, we're looking at 264. Um, so you say uh, this copyright uh, symbol is always removed. Um, Okay, so now it doesn't look like it's like it's being removed. Um, what we have is um, in the, uh, what we have is uh, um, taking subfields A and B and removing um, removing bits of the string um, and uh, removing leading and trail trailing spaces, which I believe is an answer to um, to a question that was asked previously. Um, uh, removing some more bits of the of the string, and um, so you're getting you're getting subfield A and B. So um, I'm not really sure why this um, why the symbol is being removed. Um, but what you can do is. Um, Send this question into either to the GoEV Go info inbox or uh, to Primo support, and we'll take a closer look at it. Uh, thank you for tuning in to, for this uh, fifth session of our GoVE Become an Expert series. I hope you all benefit from the topics we discussed today, and I hope to see you again in the coming GoVE sessions, especially part two of this session on data normalization, which will be delivered next week.